and I'm back again. Okay, guys, this is uh, something uh, new. First, um, I want to. This is the one I did a while back. This is a um, a Vallejo paint with the thicker pouring medium. And what I'm going to do now is um, put a top coat on because we're all pretty anxious about those top coats. Now the first thing you really have to do is make sure that it's pretty much level. So uh, I think we can we can work with this. That's pretty much it. But you know, for the just to be on the safe side, I think you should always uh, check if it is level. Um, you don't have to buy one of these. You can get a little app on your uh, mobile phone to see if it's level. They have those apps in the Play Store, in the uh, Apple uh, iTunes shop. You can get them for free. So, okay. The thing is that with this pouring medium, um, they made sure that, you know, it's for pouring, but also that we can do a top coat with it. And the first thing I have to do is get this out. So, I'm going to get that out because you don't want any air bubbles in it. There we go. Now, you don't want to shake it before you use it because that will produce air bubbles and you don't want that. So, we're going to put that here on in the middle. There you see. No air bubbles whatsoever. That's good. And we're going to do just like we normally do with uh, tilting. And what I am testing right now is putting it straight on the uh, canvas. This one I did a couple of weeks ago, so it's, uh, it's cured. But another thing I did not do is I did not take off the silicone. I did not clean it. So I'm just seeing if that's going to work. Of course, you'll have to help it uh, help it a little bit, you know, over these sides. I already have my um, my signature on the side. A little bit more, and this is something you really need to do with a little bit of patience. Don't do it when you're really busy and you have to go somewhere. Just take your time. Now here it's coming over the side, that's good. As you can see here, it's totally flat, that's beautiful. <laughs> One little air bubble there, but I'm gonna fix that in a bit. Okay, let it go back. Let it come down here over the side. And if you do this with a glove, you know, it'll be cool because Oh, I wish I would stop with that word cool. <laughs> Everything I say is cool. But I like the way you can, you know, use your gloved hand to um, to make sure that it's nice and smooth. The sides, get the drips off. Here, over this side. And all we have to do is get a little bit more coverage over here. Now, the thing is what they did with this um, medium is made sure that it is a really, really self-leveling. And that's what you need when you want to do one of these. As you can see right now, totally covered, no holes, only here one tiny little air bubble, which I will uh, remove in a bit. A little bit there. Okay, we have it fixed here. Now, you see, do see a couple of drips coming off, but that can't be avoided because you want to make sure that you have a nice thick layer. There we go. And then we lay it down. There's one air bubble, which I will be... First, I'll try it with something sharp like this. And it's gone. So... Now we can put the uh, the little dropper back in. 
but as you can see smooth as silk and that's what you want so you start off in the middle pour a, a, a reasonable amount of uh, medium and then you start tilting very slowly like this and make it bigger and bigger until you get it almost to the sides then you want to put your your finger along where you're tipping it over the side and smooth it out and right now I don't think you can see it but I can see that the sides are really smooth and covered oh I see here one little bit where it's uh, where it needs a little bit more let me get my palette knife and this is where those palette knives come in handy again because I see here one little bit that I missed and I just drop a little bit on there and like right away wham it smooths out and you don't even see where I dropped it now here's a little bit more that one little corner here perfect okay what we're gonna do um, there's a drying time from around uh, six hours and of course it always depends on the uh, humidity that is in your home or in your studio some people will have airco in their uh, studio I don't have that yet but that's the first thing I'm going to be doing when the weather gets warmer I'm going to give it um, I'm going to get some air conditioning in here because we all know you know what happened last year when it got really warm upstairs that wasn't really uh, um, easy to pour upstairs so that's what I'm going to do oops there we go I saw a little one more and it's uh, also a really good thing to have some um, a, a light shining on top of your surface because that way you can really check if you miss some because when you pour it on this um, fluid as you can see it's a little milky but like it's spread out right now it's totally transparent and you don't want to miss one or two spots you don't want that because um, pouring it when this is dry and doing it again you can do that you know if you missed a couple of spots and it's really bugging you you can do that but you have to pour the whole thing again you can't just add one little drop because I, I'm sure you're gonna see that you don't want to do that but this is right now it's um, perfectly smooth it looks like resin and we're gonna give it um, a couple of hours and see how this dries but up to now I've seen um, um, uh, Alex Vallejo do this um, in Frankfurt he did this and uh, on a small canvas uh, just a test uh, test canvas and I was really impressed with how beautifully this um, spreads how it sticks to because I used a lot of silicone there and you know it, it's like it doesn't even react to the silicone and that's really what we're looking for um, if this um, is ready when this is ready I hope I only need one coat because that would really be so so special because look look at it it's already done and if I did this with a brush I would be brushing you know this way that way and that's something that I want to talk about in a bit uh, but um, you'd be brushing and brushing and then um, you'd come in with a second layer and a third before you get something like this so I'm pretty happy with it remember that um, it looks like resin and I think you should treat it like resin because you will have to make some sort of a little tent to keep the dust out especially if you're living in a in a house where there is more dust than you know a normal uh, I have a lot of dust in my studio I have a lot of dust when I was uh, working upstairs um, it's sometimes it's just you know how old the house is and how much uh, dust is in the air but um, up to now this is uh, totally perfect and I'm hoping that it'll stay exactly like that now the thing I wanted to talk about is um, I've had a couple of people email me about the polyurethane uh, about it cracking I'll tell you what the deal is let's put this on the side when you um, when you varnish 
Like people think, you know, this is the most important thing when you pour your painting and that's, you know, the most important thing. But really, I think I consider varnishing very, very special because you have to do it in a special way. You can't just pour it on and think, okay, that's it. Um, with some varnishes, it will work. With some, it won't. You'll get all these cracks. So the thing you do, uh, especially with the polyurethane, you bring on the first layer is very, very thin, a really thin layer. And you don't even, um, you don't even care if it has some brush, brush marks in it, as long as it really, really, it has to be really thin. Um, it's sort of like sealing the painting before you're going to really varnish it. And the thing is that we use a lot of um, different additives in our paints. And there are, there are ways to get the crackle effect without using crackle paste. And that is one way to do that is use a acrylic paint, then come in with a PVA glue and bring on that glue in, you know, one, you brush one way. So you brush it all on like that, say up and down. Then um, when that is dry, you come in with your second color and you brush that second color, you do exactly the opposite way. So we're bringing on our um, PVA in a vertical stroke. Then we come in with the second acrylic color and we do that in a horizontal stroke. If you do that and don't, you, you, you can't brush too much, just, you know, brush on that color in one nice smooth brush stroke. Then when that dries, it'll crack because that's how it works. Now think about this when we're doing these uh, acrylic pores and we have PVA glue and all sorts of additives in our paint, you have to think about it because when you start varnishing the first layer, you go um, horizontal, you go vertical, you go back horizontal and again vertical. You have to bring it on like that. And then when you have that first um, seal, and it's all covered in a uh, polyurethane. The second one you come in with, you can do a little bit thicker, but still you have to do up and down and sideways because that's how that, you know, the additive works. So that's very important. And I thought I'd, you know, share that with you guys, because a lot of people who start doing the pouring, they sort of, you know, just do this, this for the first time. And then, they want to sell something or they want to keep it because it's a beautiful pour, but they forget that, you know, varnishing is a sort of an art all by itself. So you have to go that way and that way. And the more you use those brush strokes, the less chance of cracking. Now, of course, there are a lot of varnishes out there and every varnish will, you know, have a different way of using how you use it. But to be on the safe side, I always say, brush up and down and sideways, and then you'll get the most beautiful uh, effect. It'll be smooth. Uh, don't do it too thick. That's what I never do. I don't almost never use the full, um, full thickness out of the bottle. I always water it down just a tiny bit and you'll see that it spreads beautifully and you'll get a beautiful finish. There were some people that were in, in the Frankfurt Messe and I'm looking for my, oh yeah, I'll get it. I had this painting, as you can see, it's varnished. And some people thought it was wet. And the funny thing is <laughs> that I thought that was really funny. They came along and they did very softly, they did this thinking it was wet. I'm thinking, why would you do that if you think it's wet? Because you'll ruin my painting. So they were looking at it and really touching it like that. I said, it's not wet. You can just touch it. It's uh, varnish. <laughs> and I thought that was really funny. But uh, this one I had uh, in the uh, Frankfurt Messe. It's uh, on Etsy at the moment. So it's for sale. If you like this pour, go over there and you can put it in your little shopping cart and you can buy it. So it's still for sale. And it has some beautiful, uh, beautiful cells. It really does. Okay. 
Now the other, uh, oh yeah, I showed you that one. That is almost dry. So that's, uh, that's going to come up uh, this weekend. Um, we're going to do that. And um, this one, when it, well, you already see a piece of uh, dust in it. That's, see, that's why you need a tent. You need, uh, you can make one, you know, just put something uh, like um, um, a, uh, where you dry your clothes on, one of those things, and you put plastic over it and you just slip your painting under it. But I can already see here there's a one little dust speck in there. I don't like it. Okay. I pushed it under so it's nice and flat again. But I'm going to stop the video now, guys, and uh, tomorrow I'll be back. And I will show you this when it's dry. And I'll give you a nice close-up from uh, to see how smooth this uh, dries up. And remember, this is a test because uh, I didn't take off the silicone. Maybe, for, uh, maybe it would even be better if I did take off the silicone first. But for experimental uh, reasons, I didn't. So I just wanted to see what happened. And uh, we'll see that tomorrow. So thanks all for watching. Love you all to pieces. Bye-bye.